Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld. I'm a principal architect at Dell. I'm one of our leads on the Crowbar project. Uh, this video is designed to show you how to install the open source version of Hadoop. Uh, we have some other videos that show you how to build that product. So um, we're going to we're starting at the point where you've already uh, acquired a open source Hadoop ISO running on CentOS. Uh, the same instructions would work for the RHEL based version. Um, or really any of our any of the crowbar based products but we're going to focus on Hadoop uh, and then this video is going to be followed by a video where I sit down with Joey Jablonski and actually tour you through the Hadoop fit functionality that we've got so let's get started um, I'm going to do the demo on um, VMware Workstation uh, you could use a variety of, of different components first thing you need to be aware of is that um, you need to set your networking so under edit virtual network editor I'm going to want to make sure that I have set my virtual network to use the default IP address for Crowbar. Uh, we have another video that shows you how to change the defaults. Uh, it's simpler if you're just going to be running in VMs to use the default settings. So our default network is 192.168.124.0. That's our class C for Crowbar by default. So we set VM host, the, this is the uh, natural host network, and we turn off the DHCP server. Uh, Crowbar is a DHCP server, so it will conflict with the one in Crowbar. So our host-only network has no DHCP and uses the subnet. Uh, I also configure a second network that Crowbar can use, uh, also no DHCP. This one's 192.168.122, so that's a, a second network. Um, once again, it's host-only. This ensures that the Crowbar traffic stays on your, your host, your virtual machines. Um, Okay, so those are the network settings that you need to get started with a Crowbar deployment. Uh, if you're doing a physical deployment, one of the things to make sure of is that you either turn off VLANing uh, in Crowbar or that you set up your switch uh, with the VLANs that are outlined in the Crowbar deployment guide uh, as defaults. Of course, you can change those however you want uh, in the network bar clamp. Uh, the simplest path for getting started quickly is to follow the default configurations. So we're going to set a new VM. So new virtual machine. We're going to do a custom virtual machine. Uh, I'm going to install the operating system. Crowbar installs the operating system during boot. It's a Linux CentOS 64-bit for this, this model. If I'm using uh, the Ubuntu or RHEL versions, I would choose uh, the versions there. Uh, this is going to be determined at build time. So this I will call the Hadoop demo. And uh, it's very useful to have multiple cores and processors that allow multi-threading. And I recommend two gigs of RAM for the system. You can do you can use one host-only networking, like I showed before. Uh, we're going to build just a default virtual disk. Twenty gigs is sufficient. So I'm taking all the defaults there for customizing the hardware. I'm going to use my uh, Hadoop open source disk. And I'm also going to add in that second NIC I was talking about. So custom VMNet 2. So that's the second one. Uh, the first NIC is already set to VMNet 1, which is this, this host-only adapter. That's default. So now I'm set. I've finished building my system. And I'm going to turn it on. Uh, because the ISO is attached, it's going to go through. And uh, boots boot that ISO, bootstrap it, uh, build the system, prep it for Crowbar. It doesn't actually do the full Crowbar install. Um, it is at this point just going to get us ready for doing the Crowbar install. That allows us to do any customizations that are necessary. Once again, customizations are out of the scope of this video. We have other videos and documentation on the uh, GitHub Dell Cloud Edge that explain how uh, to customize and tweak uh, Crowbar. It has a lot of configuration options. Um, we've worked very hard to make sure the defaults are sane, so you, you don't have to change things if you don't want to. Um, at this point, I'm going, uh, I'm going through an automate, automated, completely uh, generic uh, CentOS build to lay down the base operating system. Uh, I'm not going to keep talking through all this. I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's ready for login. So we've got the release done. Uh, the, the base install done. 
I need to log into CentOS. If you've watched any of the Ubuntu videos, CentOS is a little bit different. Instead of logging in as Crowbar, I log in as root. Password is still Crowbar. And I'm now super user for the system, so I don't need to uh, su sudo uh, somewhere else. At this point, I've got the base system in. Um, I can complete the install uh, using the Red Hat DVD, uh, not the CentOS 5.7 directory extra, just like we have had it before. So this is very similar to the installs that we had before. Extra is where all of the Crowbar install components uh, live, so I need to supply my install, uh, my favorite admin crowbar.com. It's the standard I use. You can call it anything you want, um, as long as you have a fully qualified domain name that's a legal fully qualified domain name. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kick off the install. Uh, this is the install for Crowbar. If I had wanted to tweak the network settings specifically, uh, change the default address or the subnets that get deployed, uh, this is where I would do that. Um, and we, like I said, we have a video already posted that explains how to do that, and I know it's been documented on the, the Crowbar Wiki also. Um, speaking of, uh, this is the Crowbar uh, GitHub website where the code is loaded. Uh, the community has been doing a great job uh, adding content to the Wiki. So the, this is the home page for the Wiki. Uh, and there's links to all sorts of resources, including install, packaging bar clamps, getting Crowbar ISO, and building that. Uh, and some of the information I'm talking about is linked into uh, the networking bar clamp and how to configure that. Uh, so tremendous resources uh, to help you get going with Crowbar. Uh, at this point, things are going along. It's doing the installation. Uh, it's built, at this point, built all of the prerequisites to run Crowbar, which is predominantly installing a Chef server, and now it's, uh, it's already built the Crowbar website and it's installing the bar clamps. So uh, the bar clamps do control all the functions and extensions. Let me bring back the web browser. And we should be able to get Crowbar already running. Not yet, it's not all the way up. So once Crowbar is running, even though it's not fully installed, the web server will come up and we'll be able to see it. The Chef server for Crowbar is here. If you reinstall, you'll see this. It's nothing to worry about. The cookies, what's happened here is uh, it's just left over a cookie from a previous login. So I just have to go in and reinstall. It's useful to, to show that so that you can understand that it's not actually an error. It's just a, a Chef security measure. So I've logged into Chef, uh, and the system is just still now coming up. Uh, it, we actually use Chef to install uh, Chef and Crowbar. So everything that you see happens is going to build on top of the Chef server that we have running. Let's see if the website's up yet. It is, uh, although it's not fully operational yet. Uh, that's our error page. So we're going to let it keep running. I'm not going to force you to watch that. I'll come back uh, when Crowbar is more fully deployed. So we completed the setup. You can see that our node transitioned through these various states. All these are Crowbar node states. Uh, and then it said the admin node was deployed. The script was done. So I should be able to go back to my web browser, refresh the page, and log into Crowbar. Yay! So this is uh, the basic Crowbar UI. Uh, looks like I have a small bug to fix with the localization for Hadoop, which I will do. And um, I'll walk you through how to do this deployment. The thing that's going to make this interesting is not doing a, just one node, but actually bringing up a full cloud. So over here, I've set up uh, five more nodes of capacity for Hadoop. All these nodes are set up pretty much the same. I'm not going to walk you through the VM process. I have a gig of RAM. Uh, I have four processors on them. You can get by with a half and two. That would be fine. Uh, my, my system can handle it, so I give it a little bit more 
um, 20 gig hard drive. I don't have a floppy. Uh, I'm on the same two networks, uh, and these systems are basically going to pixie boot and go through the normal discovery process. So when these machines boot, the DHCP client's going to identify them. Over here, Crowbar is going to tell it to build a discovery image, uh, which we call Sledgehammer. It's, bent, it's based on a, a CentOS image, uh, and that is going to check in uh, to Crowbar. So as that node boots, it's going to show up over here in the, the list. Undetermined means the uh, is, would be the switch information. In VMs, we can't determine the switch, so we, we don't see it. On a physical system, we actually will list the, the switches that are available in the system. So it's going to start doing the boot sequence here. Uh, while we wait for that, I'm going to go and boot the other systems. So you can see it's actually doing a install uh, and deployment of this discovery image. Let me boot the other nodes, put some load on my system. So that'll bring up four additional nodes of capacity. They're going to go through all the exact same sequences. And what you'll see over here is the first node we booted has now been discovered. Uh, it's going to start in this gray, they, gray mode. This is a quick discovery mode. And then it's going to switch to a D name uh, when it's been fully discovered. It, it'll flash into a yellow um, uh, waiting for allocation state. I'm going to flip back. I'm going to pause the video because this is going to take a little bit of time and show you when all four of those nodes have checked in. Fixed it. So now we're back. We've got the four nodes that I'd started all in this allocate phase. The way allocate works is that um, it effectively puts the systems into a whitelist or allows you to put them into a whitelist. Originally, we would just grab systems and set them up. Now we actually allow you to choose that. Uh, and you can release machines from this state in two ways. Uh, I'm going to show you the, the sort of generic way that sets them up in the base condition, but you could also pull them into a proposal, which we'll show when we go through our Hadoop deployment. Uh, and you can, it will release them from that state if you, if you include them in a proposal and they're in this state. The advantage of doing it uh, from a proposal is that the proposals are intelligent enough to actually set up the BIOS and RAID based on what is needed. So uh, if you do it from the proposal, you actually get deeper functionality uh, for the system. Uh, but this is the way we're going to do it through bulk edit is um, easy and quick and from uh, getting things running quickly it, it helps with that. So I'm not going to set description. BIOS and RAID um, uh, on the open source version would, would not even be enabled. In this case um, they're showing up because I, I sort of did a hybrid build between our open our, our normal pieces and our, our open source pieces. Uh, but by simply checking allocate here and hitting save I'm telling those nodes to go ahead and, and deploy the operating system and, and start building. Uh, so there, when, when the screen comes back from this and I look at the dashboard, so now everything's allocated, I could show all. These are now in this state where they're, they're being set up. So the spinners are going to indicate that. And if I jump over to my virtualized, my virtualization host, what you'll see is these nodes are now, there's a loop that's been running in the background waiting for instructions. Now it's actually going through and doing all the work to do the configuration. So it's going to go through and install CentOS, get it running, put the Chef Client on it, register it in the system. And once that's done, they'll come back as green. Uh, that's the last step for this, this video. I'm going to pause the video and come back when those are done. So now this is where we leave off with this recording. We've now got our four nodes. They're all in the green ready state. Uh, and if I was to actually go over to the nodes themselves, you would see they all are at the login prompt, meaning they've, they've successfully deployed and have the chef uh, client running. My next step is going to be to uh, introduce Joy Jablonski and uh, get a tour of actually setting up a Hadoop environment.